Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to be making some pay, uh, book page paper clip dangles. I'm going to be adding some charms or beads off the end. Uh, mainly working with flowers today but I do have a butterfly there and some words just to show you that um, you can vary what you do all with the one um, principle. So you tear a bit of your book page. So I'm using 50 mil paper clips. You can use the smaller ones if you wish. I actually like working with the bigger ones. And then you tear um, a piece of book page. You want a little bit out each end of it. And then we fold it over the longest side. So the side that hasn't got any breaks in it. And we put it through there. We do that because we can get it even around. If we went in, I'll show you with another one. If we went in, say, just on this side one, like that, when we fold, it's not going to be connected to there and it'll slip up there. So always go in that side that doesn't have any breaks in it, which is that side there. All right, so when, once you fold it over, just give it a little bit of glue to hold that down and in place. And then it's a matter of just get that first fold over fairly snug and then just wrap around. Now, after the second wrap, I, don't, I like to put a little bit of glue. It'll just stop it unraveling if we get to the end. Now you can do this as thick or as thin as you like but I think four wraps is enough and I will cut it just shy of the edge. So if I turn that over you can see it's just shy of the edge and then we'll glue that down. And the glue I'm using is art glitter glue. It dries fairly quickly. And that's the first one done. They're really easy and really um, versatile in what you can do with them. If you didn't want any bulk as far as beads and that go, if we bring this little one over, if you didn't want the bulk on the end, you can put a flat charm off the end of it. So you can decorate it any way you want to. And I only really decorate the one side, but totally up to you if you want to decorate um, both sides of it depending on what you're going to use it for now you can distress that a little bit i'm just going to add a little bit to the edge but you don't have to depending on you know how light or white your book page that you're using is so we'll just might wrap a couple of those and then we'll get into the decorating so once again you flap over now that one actually fans out a bit at the top as you can see so I'm just going to tear the edge off I like the torn edging but you definitely can use scissors if you want to if you want your things straight and rather than book page, you can use scrapbook paper, cardstock, craft paper. Then fold it over and then we're going to wrap twice. Add a bit of glue and just hold it fairly firm as you go. get to the fourth wrap and then just cut it a little bit shy again now you can see that I accidentally let go of that but it didn't unravel because I had glued it halfway through and that's the purpose of it otherwise it would all unravel and you'd have to start all over again that's that one we'll do another one so I'll show you how um, I tore the paint page here I got my paper clip and I roughly gauged how wide I wanted it and then I just tore it 
Now I liked my words going that way, but you can also have them go that way. It's going to take the ear off that one as well because it fans out and I want to keep it fairly neat. So once again, fold it over, put a strip of glue there. And then being quite firm in your rolls. On the second roll, add some glue. And then the fourth one we cut. And it's a really quick process too. It's it's basically just gluing and folding, but there's no measures. So you can choose how wide you want to do it, how many wraps you want to do. What type of paper you want to use. Good to make these ahead of time too and I'm sure I'll just I'll go over one more time um, ahead of time have them plain in your stash and that way you can decorate them to suit the type of journal that you're making or if you're like me I like to also have some ready-made ones in my stash that cuts out all this process. So when you're decorating a journal, you're just grabbing ready-made and putting it in. It's a good way to use up your scraps too. Okay, we'll do one more. You can see the measurements are really fairly rough. You pick the, the side that hasn't got a split on it. So the long side of your paper clip. Over twice, add some glue. So basically halfway. So if you're doing more than four wraps, then you just do it halfway. You could also, you know, depending on how thick you're, you're wanting it, you could just do it every couple of wraps. Okay, so I might just quickly give them a very light distressing. Do front and back. Being a dangle, if you're touching it to the outside of a journal or to a tab, then chances are you might get to see front and back of these. If they're going on a front cover, then you'll probably only see one side, but it just finishes it off really. You've got no raw sides left. And like I said before, guys, you don't have to distress these either. 
And then what we do is we look to how we want to embellish it. So, you know, we can use a flower, a word. So we might use a word. Let's go. Let's go use your wings. And this is from Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Tiny Text. I've just stamped it on cream cardstock. And I'm just going to distress it just slightly. And because that one's long, fairly long, it takes up the whole width. So we don't really even have to add anything to that one. So it's great to have some word dangles off your journal. This one here, I've also got some um, ribbon. So it's material ribbon that you could put along, along there as well. I'm not going to, but I was just showing you, you can vary it as much as you like. You can add some netting to it, which we might go down this way I don't want to go the full length of it but I do want to add it on the top and netting's good because you can still see your book page through but it adds a little bit of contrast there to it Actually, I might go the darker flower. So these are little birdie flowers. Um, they're pre-made like that. They've got like a little pearl center. But if you've got a tiny punch, you could punch out a flower and then just put something in the middle there as the center. I think these ones are 49 a market and they've got like a little Diamante in the middle. So that's that one there. And we're gonna be adding some beads. So you'll see how it will all come together. You can also put some cheesecloth on it, which I might do. And cheesecloth's like the netting. It just adds a little bit of extra texture. Though it is quite fiddly working with small projects like this. So I would put my glue down and then add the cheesecloth over the top. And that's a white cheesecloth that I've used there. You could use lace as well. I'm going to put a butterfly on this one, just deciding whether to do him that way. I do like that way because we are hanging it down. Down. and you can put some you know some extra little things on there a word what have we got something we've used wings no I might leave it plain I think I like just the butterfly and then we will use a little brown bead or something off the end there and keep your scraps like this because we can use two of those on the next one. Sort of like micro scraps um, in a sense. I've got a mini, um, it is a 
Stampin' Up Punch, uh, it's a heart. So if you've got some mini punches, whether they're flowers or hearts, you can definitely add those on as well. Might add a bit more glue to it. And all I've done with that one is I've just punched it out of some scraps. So I had this scrap bit of paper uh, and I've, I needed red, so I just um, punched it out of there. That why scraps are that's why scraps are really important, guys. Um, you just never know when you're going to need a little bit of, you know, in this case, solid colour. Or if it was patterned, I did have another one that I could have punched out as well because I know that my punch would have fitted in the middle there. So if I get my punch, I would have lined it up like this. And we know that we've got another red heart out of a scrap bit of paper that we can use. Okay, we might do another couple. We might put a flower on those. Uh, we might see if we can add some of this and I'm going to trim the sides I don't want it quite as fluffy So if we trim it down, as you can see the difference in each side. And I'm going to just take a little bit off the end because I don't want it hanging over the book page. Now I'm going to use um, a quick dry adhesive. It's from Helmar and it's similar to their fabric glue. The art glitter would uh, glue it. It takes a little bit longer to dry. And what are we going to go on this one? Might see if I've got a diamante for the middle of that. I mean, you could put a brad as well. bad and so I don't can't get to my small ones at the moment half my stuff's packed away at the moment um, in a shipping container so I'm still still unpacking a lot of stuff and getting things sorted and that's that one it gives you like a little bit of a hessian bag type feel and then this one I'm not going to put anything on the back I'm going to put a uh, we've already might go with a uh, a cream flower so you can see basics really pretty so there's a couple of different combinations Okay, so let's add some decoration to them. I'll just put my pin back in my glue. This art glitter is not very forgiving if you forget to put the pin back in because it dries um, fairly quickly. All right, so let's grab a couple of head pins.
Now, I, let's work with this one first. I really love the colour of this one and I've got some um, contrasting beads that I want to use. So let's have a look at... Might put some bead caps on it just to jazz it up a little bit rather than the plain bead. Now these beads are 8 mil, And then I want to put... Just a slight decorative um, spacer bead either end. Now these are head pins so we know that the bead's not going to go over this. It's got like a flat head on it. We're going to put the bead, and these are bead caps. They just add a little bit of, um, you know, more decorative element to the bead. And very small beads to work with these uh, little spacer beads. And then we're just going to cut the wire off. A measure I always use is just the width of my finger for the loop. And then I then I squeeze the cutters down a little bit. Put my finger over the top, just so it doesn't fly everywhere. And then these are round nose pliers. So I bend it towards me and then I grip it and then I just work it around. It's probably one of the most simple loops to do if you're a beginner. Then I'll turn it around and we basically want to tuck it up the top of that bead. Just so it joins together and there's no gap. Just like that. So there's no gap that if we put a jump ring or a bulb pin on it then it's not going to I'm just going to make it a bit tighter that's good and then i'm just going to get a jump ring and attach it to the bottom and then we'll put a bulb pin up the top So we just loop it through, actually I'll just straighten it up. Just loop it through there and through the end. And then we get our pliers. So our flat pliers, I like to work with two. You can use your round nose with one um, flat nose, but I actually like to work with the two. So you grip it both and then turn that back till you feel or hear a click. So there's no gap and it's even, even back there. And then what I'd do is I'd get a bulb pin so you can sort of match, match the color up. We're working with silver today. So you get a silver bulb pin and then that's how you would attach it to your journal. Just like that. So that's that one done. Let's work with the cream one. Now the cream one, we might put this, I've already got one made here. Might put this beautiful pink on the end of that one. Or we could just go plain Plain cream, I think, on that one. Yep, I like that. So then we just get our, our jump ring. 
these are called unsoldered or split jump rings so you can see this one's already open they don't always come like that but never pull your jump ring out that way always twist it that way otherwise it'll weaken the integrity of the bead and you certainly don't want them to break on you then you just get your flat nose pliers and you would have heard that click back to where there's no gap and then a ball pin now you don't have to use ball pins you can use the lobster clasp like I've got on that one just depending on how you want to attach it to your journal or whatever you've already got in your stash guys most junk journalers will have um, these bulb pins. That's that one. Let's do the heart next. So let's do... Actually, we might put a tassel on it. Let's put a tassel on it. Hard to match up with the red. Um, the heart was a last minute. I didn't organise any um, coloured beads. Actually, I do have these glass beads. We could probably put the tassel on one of those. No, I think the tussle. We'll go two tussles. And then jump ring. So these are little faux leather tussles. Little short ones. You would have heard the click on that one. And then a silver bulb pin. Let me pull the drawer out. I don't know whether you can hear it or not, guys. It's been raining all day. So I've sort of been holding off to do the video because I my studio is currently in a tin shed. And um, it gets quite loud in here and I'd actually thought the rain had stopped but it sounds like it's coming back so I do apologize if things get a bit noisy and then that one's with the words we've put a tussle on that one which looks really good ball pin on top there got two more to go actually we might I like the crystals on that one and then we might just do a fairly plain one on that one and if I can look for a darker bead let's have a look please just something to match the butterfly I'm after I might use that little glass bead so we'll wire that one up Actually, I don't think I'll put a bead cap on that one. I'll just use the little spacer beads top and bottom. 
Actually, I'll use a bigger one. Rather than the three mil, I'll use the four mil. And that'll just highlight the bead. Some, sometimes with glass beads, they're not cut um, straight across or they've got a little bit of a jagged edge. These will just complement it and sort of take that away. As does the bead caps, but we're just going to... So they sort of hide it a little bit. And then, like I said before, I use my finger uh, width for a bit of a measure. And it's, it goes at about a third in. And then I cut it at the top. And put my finger over the top so it doesn't go flying. And then with the round nose pliers, simple loop, just pull it towards yourself. Grip it in your round nose pliers and start the loop over until it comes back and meets itself and I've I've just lifted it up a bit to tuck it in you can hear that rain now and our jump ring that butterfly there I've put glossy accents on that it just gives it a glossy sheen so you could use little um, die cuts on this as well but look at that isn't that gorgeous and um, I do have a video on that too guys I will link it below for you And you don't have to dangle anything off these either. You can just have them have them like that. You can take your um, book page down further if you didn't want as much, if you weren't hanging anything off there. Or even if you were, you can make your book page wider and just have a very small loop out the bottom. And then we'll attach this one. which is really pretty that one but like I said you know we could do charms what have we got here? you could you could dangle a charm off the bottom there it doesn't have to be a bead necessarily it can be we got little butterflies here we could have put a, a butterfly charm off that one I actually like the beads because I'm having mine off um, some tabs, some little file folder tabs. I'm going to dangle them off the side. So I've gone with the beads. I really like that look. So your bulb pin would go, it would attach if you were attaching it off a tab out the side. And then that would dangle out from your journal. If you're having it inside and didn't mind a bit of bulk, then you could attach it to the top of a page to the top of a tuck you could even um, not put a bulb pin on it at all glue that straight on so take that away and glue that straight onto a, a pocket or a tuck or a little notebook you could have it on the front front of your journal you know with your words on it you could have it across that way and have it dangling down like that entirely up to you on how you want to use it but they do have a lot of uses and they're they're great fun they're really easy um great way to use up your scraps and um it's good to have a few of those in your stash so these are the ones that i had already done
and that one's done with you know your lobster claw but thanks for joining me today guys um i hope you got a little bit out of that uh, or a reminder on how fun they are to create you will need you you know you everything you've got is got to be small um you know as small as you can to put on there because you know they are like a little mini little mini dangle but thanks guys i look forward to seeing you on the next video bye